Memorial Day is observed in the United States in commemoration of those members of the armed forces killed in war. National observance is marked by placing of a wreath on the tomb of the unknown in Arlington Cemetery. Locally, flags, insignias, and flowers are placed on the graves of veterans. If you've never read the story and the procedure that takes place at the tomb of the unknown, it is so very, very inspiring. It takes place 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they show little glitches of it on uh, TV every once in a while. How the soldier will march up, take 21 steps, he turns. They never stop. They never stop. Memorial Day honors the heroes who laid down their lives to preserve our freedom. A hero is someone who has given their life to something bigger than oneself. It is not just about picnics and ball, picnics and ball games. These brave soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard died protecting their country and what it stood for. They died defending a way of life they felt was worth dying for. Families, children, freedom, morality, values, and responsibility. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes. 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 We may stand as we sing, and of the republic.
that he last breath. Um, he had the emblem. I can't remember what she called it, but that was her life story. Thank you. And her daddy was back, but it took a long time. Yes. A long time. Praise but God is good. Yes. We're going to say, God bless America. Yes.
man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him in the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm thankful today as I am always extremely thankful for your word. It is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll use this servant, this flesh and clay this morning. Lord, I humble myself in your presence and in the presence of those that will hear this message today. I pray for a very special anointing, Lord. I say to you often, if not every day, Lord, if you're not going to anoint me, Lord, just let me know, and I won't even stand in this sacred place. So I pray, God, that you use me today. Use my vocal cords. Let me speak, thus saith the word of the living God. Go before me just now, anyone, Lord, that's not saved, that, that does not know you as personal Lord and Savior, then please God, let this be their moment and time that, re, that they receive you into their souls. May our ears and our spirit be attentive to your word this morning. May your anointing just break forth and fill this house today with your glory. And Father, always be cautious and careful to give that matchless name, honor, and glory, and praise. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Well, when the king came to, to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. He saw a man there who did not have on wedding, a wedding garment. I want to use for a thought this morning question, Paul, a very simple question. Are you ready? Or are you dressed? Excuse me. Are you dressed for the wedding? Amen. The Lord ask someone. Just be kind. Say, are you ready? Are you dressed for the wedding? That's some very interesting points, I think, to bring out in these very well familiar scriptures to us. In the parable of the marriage feast, Jesus is painting a picture of the rejection by the nation of Israel. He warns them of their certain doom, which actually happened if you're a student of the word, history of the uh, Jews, it actually happened in 70 AD when Titus destroyed Jerusalem. The Lord is also telling them of His intention to fill the Father's house with people other than themselves. The king in the parable sends out his servants to find other guests to come to the wedding celebration. As they gather themselves together, the king notices a man in the company who, do, who does not have on a wedding garment. The man is cast out of the wedding celebration. Notice that. This verse paints a picture of salvation. When Israel rejected Jesus as their Messiah, Jesus simply turned to the Gentiles. You see, the Lord intends to fill His heaven with the redeemed from this earth. He will have His number. Only those who have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will be admitted into God's heaven. I want to say that again. Only those who have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will be admitted into God's heaven. The Bible tells us when the redeemed of the Lord gather together in heaven, there will be a marriage. There will be a time of celebration known as the marriage supper of the Lamb. Read that Revelation chapter 19 verses 7 through 9. There has been a lot of preaching about this great event. And much of it can stir the heart, should stir the heart, will stir the heart, stirs my heart. But let's face it, the Bible doesn't have a whole lot about the marriage supper, or doesn't say a whole lot about the marriage supper of the Lamb. One thing, however, is noteworthy in what it does say about it. Verse 8 tells us that the people involved in this heavenly celebration will be dressed in pure white garments. Amen. And it is these garments. 
promise that I want to focus on and, re and share in this message with you today. As we look at the events of this parable and the fact that those who are saved by grace will meet in heaven. They will be dressed in white at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It seems to me that the garment, everybody say garment. garment. It seems to me that the garment is of utmost importance. When the time comes for the wedding, the Bible says you must be dressed properly or you will not be admitted. You must be dressed properly or you will not be admitted, admitted into heaven. Please listen to me carefully. You know this? Eternity is coming. How many believe that? Yeah. Eternity is coming. Your life will not last forever. You need to be absolutely certain that you will be clothed in proper attire when you reach the end of your earthly journey. And as I preach this sermon this morning, are you dressed? Are you dressed for the wedding? I want you to listen to the Word of God and let the Lord speak to your heart. If you find that you are clothed in the rags of your sins or the flimsy clothes of your own unrighteousness, I want you to respond to the Lord and allow Him to have His way in your life personally. I want to share four observations from these scriptures as you think about the question, are you dressed? For the wedding. Number one, according to verses 9 and 10, the invitation was made available to everyone. Can you say thank the Lord for that? Lord. The king sent his servants into the highways, literally meaning wide places or plazas, to gather together all that they found. He wasn't concerned, listen carefully, he wasn't concerned about their character. He wasn't concerned about their past. He wasn't concerned about their social standing. He wasn't concerned about their abilities or even about their popularity or any other consideration. He just wanted whoever would to come to the wedding celebration. Are y'all with me? Amazing grace. And you know this, but all of us that are saved, 
faith. We are cert certainly miracles of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone can be saved by the grace of God. However, before anyone can be saved, they must be called by God. Amen. Yeah. Jesus said in John 6 and 44, No man can come to me. How many times have we heard that scripture yeah. preached and quoted and taught and declared? Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. You can only be saved. I know most of us in here this morning, but maybe someone knows. You can only be saved when the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart. over the simple message of salvation. Yes. Herein lies one of the most dangerous areas of salvation. Many people feel convicted of their sins and put, off, and put God off for whatever reason. Yes. They believe that they will be saved but that they will, that they will be able to do it when they are ready. That's simply just not so. The only
some people believe, uh, and even some ministries are teaching this horrible doctrine uh, that when once you come to Jesus, that whatever you do after that, your sin is no longer on you. Uh, it is on Christ. Uh, do you know why I feel like that even churches today are sanctioning lifestyle of homosexuality and they don't rise up against abortion, killing precious little innocent babies uh, in their mother's womb, even up to the eighth and nearly nine month of pregnancy? You know why there's so much going on that's immoral? Not only in the United States of America, we surely have our problems. But what makes it so bad in our great nation is when we're morally defeated, when we're morally loose, and we have our morals have just simply left us for some reason or another. And I believe it is because some men's conscience have been seared with a hot iron. I believe that people, even in our and spurn the Holy Spirit over and over and over again until they do not know right from wrong. They can't discern the difference. That's why the prophet said a time would come, an hour would befall us that they would call sweet bitter and bitter sweet. They would call evil good and good evil. If that doesn't sound like a conscience that's been seared, if that
that was a concern in David's heart because he had a great relationship with God. But something in David's spirit triggered him to say, Lord, please don't withhold your holy presence from me. Please, God, don't withdraw your Holy Spirit from me. And he knew the reason he was saying that because he had sinned and he had sinned repeatedly. But he made his way back to God. He heard the voice of God. He obeyed the voice of God and corrected his relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Such a conscience does not work properly. Sincere. Listen to this again. I want you to catch this. A seared conscience is as if spiritual scar tissue has dull the sense of right and wrong. Now think about that. Look how dull. I was thinking, I've been thinking about this. I'm thinking about this even this morning. And I don't want to ever be misunderstood. I love everybody. But I don't know if you share my feeling. I am so sick and tired and fed up with Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I know you think they should right. make the same thing a little bit. But you need to understand people that have no conscience about MS-13 murdering, cutting people's hearts out while they're still alive, murdering little children. I'm going to tell you, somebody's, somebody's heart's been cut around. Amen. Somebody's conscience has been seared. Yes, yes. I grew so weary. Someone said this morning, correct me, honey, if I'm wrong. I think someone said on the news this morning that there have been, was it 40 million babies that have been aborted since 1972 or 3? Oh, uh, Wade versus Roe. Listen to me, church. You say, well, Pastor, get off of that. You can't get off of that because if you can get into that spirit and that attitude after a while, you're going to be just like the rest. You're going to start. What do you think Isaiah said that? They'll call sweet bitter. They'll say bitter is sweet. They'll say good is evil, and evil is good. Let me know that's crazy. Let me know that's a ludicrous statement for somebody to say that there's no difference in bitterness and, and, and sweet and, and good and evil. Well, what happens when the conscience, this is what Paul is saying, when the conscience speaking lies and lies so much. Having their own conscience, their own. I want us to think about our own conscience. Are you? Yes. Are you dressed for the wedding? Yes. Are you dressed for the wedding? It's like a hide, the seared conscience. It's like a hide of an animal scarred with a branding iron that comes numb to further pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want you to get this today. Mm -hmm. So the heart of an individual with a seared conscience is desensitized. Yeah. To moral yeah. conviction. Amen. These, these Amen. scriptures answer Amen. a lot of my questions for our present Amen. time. Amen. Yes. And you know what, church? You don't have to be. You don't have to be a theologian. This is such yeah. a simple yeah. message. If the Bible, I'm using the word if I die for it, it's my, it's, mm -hmm. it's my roadmap. It's mm -hmm. my direction. Amen. But if the Bible is correct, mm -hmm. this is such a simple message yes. to understand. Yes. There will come a day after the Spirit of God has been turned away when God will no longer deal with the lost heart. Mm -hmm. I time. We, my wife and I said, listen, Bill Gaynor, I don't know if I'm familiar with it. Uh, and, uh, Jeff and Sherry Easter. Jeff and Sherry Easter. Well, we sit in our living room. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh God. And then he sang that old song. Sister Bonnie, what was it we were talking about this morning? Uh, I think about the lovely. I got shoes on my feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. For yeah. the on His daddy wrote that song many, many years ago. And we sat and we listened to some of those beautiful, beautiful songs. And we, I sat and wept. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at my wife. And I said, honey, we, we're just missing something today. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the church. We are. We're, we're missing something of all the whistles and bells. And yeah. we're, we're missing something trying to keep up with everybody else. And I'm just thinking, oh, God. Would you send that spirit back? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 There was no craziness in that. No one was yeah. acting like they lost their minds. No one was cackling like hens laying eggs and just acting foolish. But there was just a reverential presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And I think, Lord, please, please, God, bring that 
of us are tall. Some of us are heavy. Some of us are not. Some of us are more educated. Some are not. Some wear different natural clothing, clothing than others. But when it comes to the garment, when it comes to the garment that every believer is wearing yes. in Christ, Amen. there should be something about every one of us. Yes. That's why when they came in with Donald's two or three weeks ago, when we were sitting in there, and this couple was in there, and she said something about us being a Christian group, it's because we were all dressed up. Yes. Amen. Amen. we were all of the same spirit. Yeah. Amen. It's because we were all born again. And listen, listen, I want you to get this in your hearts. A wedding garment, salvation will change your appearance. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. When a person comes to Jesus to be saved, I preach this all of my life, and I have always wondered why that anybody could see this any differently. This makes no sense at all to me. When a person comes to Jesus to be saved, he changes them completely. Yes. He changes them externally. Yes, yes. Amen. He changes them internally. Yes. Yes. Amen. And the most glorious part, he changes us eternally. Yes. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of my Baptist constituents, I've heard them say, people that go back into the world after they once come to Christ, Maybe they just were never saved. So I'm thinking about that now. I don't agree with that doctrine because I've known people that obviously their, their life changed. Yes. They made decisions. They walked away from the Lord. The change is so great that even the Lord never sees that person the same way ever again. Right. Amen. You know, you, our unconverted life. Amen. You know, you've heard me any time I preach a meeting somewhere for some evangelistic sermon. I use myself for example because I know the miraculous power that He performed in me. Amen. Amen. And you've heard me share my testimony about what the Lord brought me from. And you know what? He never brings that up. I'm the one that's always bringing it back. Amen. 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 He's in forgot about me being a 16-year-old drunk. He's forgotten about my foul language. Amen. He's forgotten about my mischievous and dull conduct. Yes. He's passed it that as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't think about it. You know, God Almighty has forgotten about it. But it's because of His eternal Christ doesn't make a bit of difference. That's right. 
It was take your wealth that you've been blowing it on the world. Teach you how to use it for his glory. That's right. That's right. Some may have been wealthy and dressed in all the finery that money could buy. But whatever their appearance, whatever their appearance, when they were invited, when they put on the wedding garment, it covered everything. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you're catching that. Yeah. It covered everything. The field was gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rags and the ugliness was gone. Yes. All that could be seen was the pure white cleanliness yes. of the wedding yes. garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if your heart's right with God, when our hearts are truly right with God, something about our clear conscience. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. I tell people all the time. Yes. Backsliders. People that we meet and try to move them back to Christ. Mm -hmm. I've had people to tell me that we're blatant little sin. I've had people say, Preacher, I just, I, I live under conviction. I'm convicted all the time. Sometimes I don't rest well because of it, etc., etc. I said, you need to stand up and give the Lord an applause. Yes, that's right. Amen. 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 You need to applaud on the Holy Spirit that He's still tugging at your heart. Amen. In conclusion, are you dressed? Are you dressed for the wedding this morning? Mm -hmm. Whoever, what few or many will hear this message on YouTube. Are you? Are you dressed for the wedding? It's coming. Marriage service. I, I believe it's just around the corner. Yes. All the disturbance that's taking place in our world. All the hatred. House that divided cannot stand. We know our nation is divided. I told my the other day. And all the, the meanness and all the ugliness and all the division and all the hate mm -hmm. that's going on in our nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's still a lot of good stuff going on. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. There's still some yes. good things that is transpiring. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't believe it's going to be long until we're going to literally be in this great marriage feast. Praise God. I believe it could probably happen sooner. I don't know how many people keep up, but I'm not a scholar on this. But I do know that a couple of weeks ago that the Jerusalem they acknowledged as the capital of Israel was well, not just something that our president did. I applaud. I applaud. But I'm telling you something. Just as surely as I said a few moments ago, nothing can block, can block the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nothing can stop Amen. the revelation of God. Amen. Nothing. Amen. And I'm just wondering how quickly that the temple will be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how quickly that when Paul said, when they say peace and safety, mm -hmm. then sudden destruction will come upon them. This a woman, a child, a trade. In child. I just wonder how soon that we're going to hear the trumpet sound. Yes. I just wonder how soon that we're going to hear the voice of God say, Come up, my children. Come up, my children. And they which are alive and remain shall be
and you're lost, and you must be born again. Amen. If I die in the pulpit, I want to preach this as long as there is breath in my mortal body. Amen. I not only come back to God, and I promise God in my sometimes dismal moments, my prayer, I think, God, what in the world am I doing? What are you doing with me? But I promise, I've made a covenant with God. God, I'll never stop preaching this. Sometimes I, be very honest, sometimes I feel like Elijah, you've heard me say that, sometimes I feel like Elijah in the game. And sometimes I feel like, God, can I just turn my TV on? And I did this last week. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Jensen Franklin. I heard him preach one more powerful sermon. And there, there are a few others, I believe, that, uh, that, that the Lord has touched them. And, and, and we're afraid to play with people's soul. We're, we're, we, we, we're fearful that we might we say something that would make you believe. Do you know that the tens of thousands of people that literally believe that no matter what they do, that they're okay. That's right. Yes. You, you would be utterly amazed. At, and I'm not talking about Baptist people. It's, it's, it's rolling over into the Pentecostal movement. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. But I promise you, as long as I have breath in my mortal body, if you have never received Jesus as your Savior, then you're lost. And you must be born again. Yes. That's for the seven billion people on the planet. Church, that's either correct or this is not. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced of that. If there is a, another way to heaven, except by the way of the cross, there's nothing found. From Genesis to Revelation, we'll tell you about Christ. Is love or broken world. If there is another way, and I know sometimes how our minds, how our minds will, you know, because we all have struggles in our families. <coughs> Few families today are without a struggle with the homosexual lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now the transgender, yeah. Boy Scouts of America, they want to change it. And, and the list is just simply endless. Mm -hmm. But if this is correct, and when Jesus said that he was the only way to the Father, no way to heaven except by the cross, then if that's not so, then you can't trust any of this. If that's part of it is wrong, then you can't trust any of it. If you have bowed, if you have bowed as a sinner, and called on Jesus by faith. If you have confessed your sins, and if you have received Him into your life, then you're saved. No matter what the devil tries to convince you otherwise, you're saved. Let me be right there. The enemy of your soul convince you. Watch out. No need. Give up. Even sometimes some of you, you get wet in your ears. The devil's still the devil. He didn't die when he got saved 50 years. You bow as a sinner, called on Jesus by faith. If you confess your sins, you receive them into your life, then you're saved. If there is the slightest doubt in your heart this morning about the condition of your soul, I challenge you. I beg you. I adjure you. I beseech you. I plead with you. Come to the altar and get it saved. Yeah. Are you ready for the wedding? Hallelujah. You can be, but you must be dressed in Jesus and His righteousness. No other way, no other consideration. That, that really, that, that just, I start to say that sounds like exclusivity. It is exclusive. It's exclusive to Jesus Christ. Amen. And him crucified. Mm -hmm. Would you come? Yes. Amen. If the Lord is calling you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. If I hadn't felt his unction, I think it would 
literally scare me senseless. Yes. Concern me deeply if I could do things, act in a way, yes. conduct myself in ways that I see often in the professed, professed Christian or I think Lord. Do they not know what they just said? Does he not know? My doctor used the word hell, H-E-L-L, -L, out of context this week. And it struck him when he said it. He looked at me like, oh, I wish I hadn't said that in his presence. But he claims to be a Christian. I'm not saying you know what I mean here. But I thank God, if our conscience are not working, if our spirit, if we no longer feel uncomfortable, convicted, and if someone said it that way, the devil condemns and the Holy Spirit convicts, that's perfectly correct. But don't override Holy Spirit conviction. Would you stand with me this morning?